Hey guys, I'm Tony from Tony Teaches Tech, and today I have a comprehensive overview of the settings that I use to design and configure my travel blog. So if you follow this video to the end, you'll have a complete working travel blog website that looks exactly like the one that I have, I guess, except for the pictures, but in general, the formatting's the same. And the reason I'm making this video today is because I know this is like such a a hurdle for a lot of people to get over when first designing their website and I was in the same position not too long ago but um, I figured that by doing a walkthrough like this that you guys would be in a much like better position to get started with your blog whether that's a travel blog or some other type of blog so for I guess before we begin the first thing I want to say is I'm using the generate press WordPress theme it is a premium theme uh, I pay fifty dollars for it and you can put that on as many websites as you want. The reason that I think it's worth the $50 is because it is number one, the latest, well, not the latest maybe, but a super lightweight um, theme, meaning it's only 30 kilobytes in size. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, just know that it's it's not gonna slow down your website. And I know a lot of, um, a big factor for Google in 2020 is page speed. And I got a page speed score of, 99 out of 100 with this generate press theme the way that it's configured the way that i'm teaching you how it's configured today so the uh, that is pretty much the main reason that i am using this theme specifically within generate press i'm using the wordsmith um a sub theme within the site library so that's a good starting off point and if you want to figure out how to get set up with that i have actually two videos that came before this one uh, check that out. I'll link the most recent one up here. And yeah, let's let's just dive into it. I think this is going to be a longer video just because I'm going to, like I said in the beginning, it's going to be comprehensive and I'm going to go through pretty much each and every setting and show you why it works, why I picked it and all that stuff. So um, yeah, let's get right into it. So this here is my travel blog as of, you know, January 2020. And I think I, I'm, I'm in love with it. This is a this is a nice big parallaxing header at the top that you can see the picture scrolls as you scroll down the page. I have my name of my website, Tony Travels Big front and center up here and a little tagline here, learn how to travel the world on a budget. I got my nav bar at the top that blends into the header, home travel blog, my gear about Tony contact and a search bar. Down here is a collection of my latest posts in a two by two grid a little welcome sentence or two up here. Uh, sidebar on the left hand side with two widgets, one who is Tony, which links to my about page, and one to sign up for an email list, which I will say that that's not working yet. And I know I keep promising a video, which is coming, that will uh, tell you how to link this up to a, a mail server. And yeah, so that's the home page. My travel blog page is the two by two grid. I only have four posts at this time, and these are actually stock posts. They came with the theme. Um, this is uh, this is where you can click into the individual blog posts, some more recent posts as text form categories, and that email list again. Oh, and this at the bottom is a link to my social media, which appears I think pretty much on every page. I have a my gear page, which is um, all of my affiliate links that I have set up to Amazon. So this is like the camera that I use, the lens that I use, the backpack that I use. This is how I make podcasts with this equipment. This is how I edit my travel vlogs and my travel videos with this type of stuff. So um, that's all set up here for people in case they're wondering. It's a very common question I get about my YouTube channel. Here's an about page, just a, you know, maybe like a three to five minute blurb about why I got to where I am now, why I quit my job, how, how I travel the world over the past few years, all that stuff and a contact page. So um, you'll see the common thing between all the pages is this parallaxing header, which is really cool. Uh, let me just show you one more thing. The uh, a blog post, this is what a blog post looks like. So you got your title, your date published, the author, a featured image, and then the content itself with the share buttons at the side and this um, share buttons that pop up on the left hand side. The way to comment and yeah, I think that's it. Let's figure out how I set this up. Uh, let's go into our WordPress admin dashboards, which is your website name slash WP admin. 
Let's go ahead and sign in. And when that starts up, hopefully not too much longer, but when it starts up, we'll just dive right into the appearance and see, here we go, um, how I configured everything. So uh, on the left-hand side, okay, let me just say again, the prerequisite for this is the previous video. I'll try to link that up again if they let me. Make sure you follow that in order to get to the point where we're at today, and then you can pick up from, from that point and do these small tweaks and configurations. So um, let's go to appearance and customize. Okay, so the first thing in here is the site identity. Now, while you might think that this site title matches up to this right here in the front that says Tony Travels, that's actually not the case. Um, this site title only like tells you uh, this this part up here, the Tony Travels and the uh, the actual name of the website, not this. This is from an element. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, and then this is the tagline, how to travel the world on a budget. You can see that up here in the tab bar, how to travel the world on a budget. Um, I did not upload a site icon. I actually recommend that you do, but we're not doing this in this video. Uh, go to canva.com. You can design one for free, 512 by 512 pixels minimum. Okay, so layout, this is a little bit more complicated. The uh, container layout, I guess, is like the boxes around each element. So, um, but before that, the container width, this is how wide your website is. So from here to here is 1024 pixels on a uh, desktop. So you can see that as we move that value around, it changes. Um, and this is down here, a preview of how your website's gonna look on a desktop, a tablet, and a mobile page. So we're gonna be using that quite frequently through this tutorial. I found that separating space of zero and content separator of zero made sense for my blog. And um, it was a little tricky to get it set up to this point. And if you try to do it yourself, you might run into the same thing, but these are the values that I found to be most useful. So, um, one container as opposed to separate containers, which really doesn't make sense to me because uh, separate containers actually combines these widgets together, whereas one container separates them. Okay, uh, container alignment, I pick boxes instead of text. I'm not actually sure what that changes, but I prefer boxes. Content padding, so 15, 0, 15, 30 for top, right, bottom, and left. You can see if you uh, tweak these values just a little bit, you can see the top moving, the right moving, the bottom not moving, and the left moving. Believe me guys, I spent like hours getting these to the right values between like touching these and touching separating space and content separator. This, this is what I recommend, 15, 0, 15, and 30 on desktop and 15, 15, 15, 15 on mobile. Um, that's what you look like on mobile for this type of archive style uh, posts lists. So that's good for topography. I'm sorry, that's good for layout for the container. The header, we are using the navigation as header. Uh, this, this, you have much more options if you don't do that, but um, I recommend that you pick use navigation as header and turn the mobile header off as opposed to on, because that just uh, that just adds that little site title and you can have the option to make it sticky. Sticky, so you see how the header goes away here? And if you turn the sticky header on, it stays there the whole time. So you see you still have Tony Travels there. So we don't actually want that and we don't want the mobile header. We just want um, to turn this off. So moving right along, Primary navigation. So you have the option to type something here like menu next to your menu. Um, I chose not to. The mobile menu breakpoint is 768 pixels. So when the screen is less than 768 pixels wide, it's gonna transform from the desktop menu, which is all the, the words at the top, to this one where it's collapsed under this hamburger menu. So that's the mobile menu breakpoint. The full width of the navigation bar, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the navigation width is full as opposed to contained. I'm not sure what that does. 
the inner navigation width is contained. Navigation alignment is right. I actually don't want that. I want center. Good thing we came in here. Uh, the navigation menu drop down. We're not actually having sub menus, but if you wanted to have sub menus, you can either hover over it, click down on an arrow, or click down on that menu item itself to expand these these menus down. Uh, the drop down direction again. We're not concerned about that. It's left. And the navigation search, we have that enabled. That's this search box here. Um, if you don't want that, you can simply disable it. So we want that enabled. The width of the menu items are 25 pixels on desktop. And if there's no value here, it's going to use the desktop value. So 25, 25. I noticed that anything larger than that, let's see, we'll go really narrow here. And anything larger than, you know, 25 or 30. So you see the um, the search box drop down here, the contact drop down to the next line. I don't want that. I want it to be all in one line. So I picked 25, and I know as long as I keep those menu items, we'll be okay because it's going to break to mobile at that point. The height is 50. That's just going to increase the space above and below. So that looks good there. Again, we don't have sub menus, so these values don't really matter. And uh, yeah, that's up for primary navigation. So sticky navigation, we're not doing that. It's off. Off canvas panel. Now the off canvas panel is uh, this. This is the off canvas panel. Um, it's going to be only mobile, and it's going to slide out as opposed to an overlay. What does that do? So that's the full screen overlay. We don't want that. We want a slide. And it's going to come from the left as opposed to the right. And the close button is inside. So I actually don't like how it's, there's this big gap here, but that's different. The, the only other option is um, putting it outside. And that, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to have it outside. So I want it between the two options. Inside looks better to me. It's closer to this menu for the user's um, finger and mouse. Uh, the height, 50. You can make it bigger or smaller. 50 looks good to me. So that's good. Um, sidebars. Let's go back here. So this is my sidebar right here. One of two, I think, sidebars. I have a left sidebar and a right sidebar under here. Um, oops. Let's go back to the home page. And... The sidebar layout, uh, these are just like the default. So content with no sidebars, content with a sidebar, content with no sidebars for each of these types. So the blog sidebar layout, these are actually, these were the defaults. So we're not gonna actually talk about these. What I'm more concerned about is the padding. So we have 10, 10, 10, 10 on desktop, mobile, same thing. So 10 at the top, you see the space is increasing here. Put that back in 10 at the right, increasing there. So you get it, like you're just adding the padding between the picture and the edge of the widget. The width is taking up 25% of the, um, I guess 25% of the, what was that called? Between here and here. If you want to increase that, you can do that or put it back down even smaller. I say 25% looks good. Uh, that's it for sidebar layout, blog layout. Okay, so this is a little confusing, but the content, are we talking about archives or single? This is an example, well, I guess more so the travel blog. This is an example of archived content um, or like the photography category. That's archived content travels an even better example because you can see multiple blog posts here. So, uh, excerpt. Um, if anything, between the two options, do you want expert excerpt or full content? We want excerpt because we're actually not showing an excerpt. Like if we want to show an expert here, excerpt here, relax, Tony. Uh, we could show 50 words, which did not show up. Did not show up there either. Did not show up there either. Okay, so I'm not sure what uh, what that actually does. Maybe they have it turned off somewhere 
later. Yeah, that's not changing anything. Typically, you would be able to like show like the first few words of your text here, but I'm not sure, like I said, why that's not showing up. But anyway, we don't want that, so let's not worry about that. Um, put the word count to zero, don't have a read more label, and don't have a read more as button. For these type of things, we don't want the post date displayed. We don't want the post author displayed. Uh, none of these other things, so we'll leave those all unchecked. Now for a single blog post, we do want the post date. We do want the post author, the categories down here at the bottom, we and the tags and all that stuff. Um, we don't want the post navigation, so that's just linking to the previous written blog post. So that's it for the content archives and single. Let's go to the featured image. So while we're in here in a blog post, we do want to display the featured image because if not, that'll go away. Um, and the location is below the title. So you have the title here and the location is below that. We don't want the picture above it. You could do that, but um, SEO purposes, Google recommends having the title first. And we want the picture in the center. So that's it for posts, pages. I'm not going to talk about pages because we're using an element to customize pages. That'll be little bit further in the video so stay tuned for that and the archives uh, back here on the travel blog archives we are displaying the image we have some padding around the image the image is above the title and the alignment is center so that is it for the featured images now columns we do want to display our posts in columns as opposed to just this big list um, two by two looks good for this setup where you have a sidebar. You could you could do three, like three in a row, but uh, I would recommend getting rid of that sidebar if that's the case. So that is it for our blog layout. Finally, the footer, uh, we have it at full width. The inner footer width is contained. We have one footer widget, which is here. Um, the back to top button, that is, where is that? Go to a blog post. It's not actually showing up while we're in this edit mode, but I'll show it to you because I know it's there. Here, this is the back to top button. So that's all that does. So you can enable or disable that. The footer widget area padding, 1520, 1520. So it's just gonna add some space above and below to the left and the right. Same thing for the padding, um, more space. Footer, oh, sorry, this is the widget. So this is the footer widget, this whole area right here, and this is the footer itself. So that's what that changes. And finally, the copyright at the bottom. Tony Travels Copyright 2020. You can do that with the name of your website. Uh, percent copy, space, percent current underscore year, percent. That will update the year if it turns over from 2020 to 2021, that'll automatically update to 2021. So you'll never have to worry about that or have it out of date. Awesome, so we got through one of these, or I guess two of these um, types of customization categories. Let's keep on moving. So colors, body. I am pretty much choosing this, uh, let me see, this blue and black for a lot of my colors and the white for the background. The header, honestly, most of this is done in an element. We'll get into the elements, I promise. Site navigation. All right, this is where I did some customization. So background, we made that fully transparent. You can see that you can put a color up here, but that we want the background overlaying the, the nav bar, kind of like that. So we made it completely transparent. The text is white. You can make that a different color, but white stands out the most. You can actually change the hover color. So when the mouse hovers over something, you can, you can you know, change that. But I, I figured that I didn't want any of that. You can change the color of the text when you hover. So if you want the text to change, you can do that again. We don't want that, we just want it to be white all the time. And then the one that's selected, the current one, we're on the travel blog one, that could be a different color. 
uh, or not. Oh, I have to change the transparency. Um, so you see that background's a different color. I think it looks clunky with the fact that it's like this organic nav bar that's kind of not built in. It's just hanging out here. So that's, uh, we're going to leave those all transparent. So menu items, we're not dealing with them. So I'm not going to talk about them and the navigation search. So you can customize this too. It is a clear, and I'm not sure why it should actually be looking like that. Um, a little bit darker color that's semi-transparent. So that's what that looks like and the text is gonna be white. So when you type in here, you have white text. Okay, so that's the primary navigation colors, off canvas panel. So the off canvas panel, if you remember, is this hamburger menu. Uh, let's get out of this search. There it is. Um, the background is this off black kind of gray color. Text is white, keep it simple. Kind of like before, we're gonna keep, turn off that hover, turn off the, the current selection, so everything is always just white and black, nice and plain. We don't have submenu items, so we don't have to go into that. Uh, buttons, buttons, where's the buttons? There's a button. So this button I picked to be this same blue color, kind of like the color that I'm using all over the place. The text for the button is white. The background hover, that means just when your mouse goes over it, it's a little bit brighter, so a little bit brighter blue and the text stays the same. Like, let me just prove this to you. You can change the text when you hover, but no, we don't want that. We want just white text when you hover. Okay, so that's it for buttons. Content. These really are all the elements of your website, whether it's headers, links, everything. You can customize it to your liking, but I like to stay with a general one type of theme so my links are going to be this darker blue when you hover them they're going to be a lighter blue um, the the links within a web page are going to be similar so darker blue lighter blue i think i have a fake link somewhere um don't see it but you know it's the same thing the the headers all the headers for the most part are black the text itself is black the one header I changed to blue was heading five, but I'm not sure if I'm actually using any header five elements. Maybe under here, if anything. Uh, no, so all my headers are black. And yeah, so that's that's the way to change all of that color. For the text, sidebar widgets, similar thing, black up top, blue links, black text, and forms. Uh, I guess the form would be the contact form. So, again, black and white, that's fine. The footer, we don't actually have too much down here, it's just this text, so a little bit lighter, like a gray color, blending into a lighter color background. Cool, that's it for footer, <laughs> that's it for colors. Uh, topography, topography deals with text, like the font, the thickness, the boldness. Uh, let's go through these real quick. So body, um, I recommend here that your body is between 16 and 18 pixels. It makes your blog more readable for users, more accessible. And it, like as they're scrolling through, it gives them like the feeling that they're reading quicker with a bigger text size as opposed to like something small like that. So between 16 and 18 pixels, the line height make it above 1.5, at least 1.5, maybe up to 1.8 at the most. I kind of like 1.6. That's the spacing in between. So um, I'm going to keep it at that. And the paragraph margin, I think that's the space between the paragraph and another paragraph or like the paragraph and the heading. So if we increase that there, you can see that change. So 1.2 looks good for me. And if you, if you wanted to, you can transform all of the text to be in all caps, don't do that. I'm gonna leave it all off. If you want it all to be bold, you can do that. I don't recommend doing that either. And um, pretty much throughout my whole website, I'm using the Arial font, which is like a basic, very readable font. So that's it for the body. Uh, the header, um, Arial again, a bold 25. This is actually, yeah. 
again, this is going to come into the elements so, like that we're going to talk about soon. So none of that actually applies to us. The primary navigation, does this apply to us? Yes. So we have 17 pixels on both desktop, mobile, and tablet. Um, I did apply a transform here to make all my text up here uppercase as opposed to, what is it, camel case. So that looks good. And I did a bold, which is okay because it stands out nice. Uh, okay, off canvas panel. I think we're just inheriting here. So we don't have to actually talk about that. Buttons, and but inheriting, I mean, these same styles. Buttons, uh, here's the button. Arial font again, 18 pixels. That looks good. Headings, uh, these are the headings. So heading one is 40 pixels. That is not a heading one. Heading one is, um, I wonder if we, yeah, here's, here's a heading one. So that's 40 pixels. Why is that not changing? Is it this one? Yes. So, okay, so heading, this heading is different from um, like a page heading, but I don't think I have any page headings because this these are elements again. Keep, keep talking about these elements, but we'll talk about them. I don't actually have any headings. Uh, I, I guess a better example would be, I, let me, Getting, I'm talking too fast for my, my brain's running too fast. I don't have any header one headings to show you, but I do have the single content title header one, which is uh, set at 38 pixels on both desktop and mobile. So that I think that looks good um, for my purposes. And the line height is 1.1, which is just this, like if this text wraps, there's gonna be uh, a space and a 10th of a space between each line. Um, so header two, so this should be header two for, yes. So that's header two. We have the same thing on desktop and mobile and um, a different type of header two, let's see if I get this right, is this, which is archive content title header two, yes. So this could be a different size, which it is 24 pixels here versus the 30 pixels for this header too. And and then within that, you can have a different size on mobile. Like if I wanted the mobile to be a little bit smaller than the desktop, you can do that too. But for me, I kept them the same at 30. Uh, so let's make sure we're going through these. So 38 and 1.1 for H1, font size 30, line height 1.2, bottom margin 24, Header two, and these are all Arial font, by the way. Um, archive content title header two, we have 24 font size, 1.2 line height. Header three, right down here, we have 22 pixels font size, the line height is 1.4, and the bottom margin is 15. So you can tighten that up if you want to. I'm gonna leave it at 15. Header four, 20. Font size 1.3, line height. Uh, the header five is 16 and 1.3, and header six, which I don't even think we're using these, 14 and 13. Do I switch any of these for mobile? Doesn't look like it. So that is about it for the topography for the headings. Let's quickly go through widgets. So the widgets, uh, we have the 18 font size again. So these, this, I guess it's not a widget. The widgets technically are over here, I think. Yes, so these are the widgets. Um, we're gonna keep that at 18. The bottom margin is five. The bottom margin appears to be the space between the title and the content itself. The content is 14 pixels. So that's the size of the content within the widget. Lastly, footer, pretty boring, text size 12. We're not doing anything to that. This is actually a different font, Laura, instead of Arial. Okay, so one, two, three, four down, a few more to go. I think these will be a lot quicker, these last few. Those were the most tweakiness settings that you can actually apply to this whole theme. So we got the hard part out of the way. Let's keep on going, we're chugging along here. So general, um, 
I did not change anything in here. So we have icon type font. Um, we check this combined CSS, which I'm not sure if we need to. Cache dynamic CSS. We're using plugins to do all this, so I'm not sure. And scrolls, smooth scroll is unchecked. Menus. If you wanted to, you can change around your menus in here, like <clears throat> move home to the left of or to the right of travel blog, but uh, we're going to look at menus separately within the dashboard for WordPress, so I'm not actually going to put like too much time into looking at these, except for the fact that the primary menu is this, and the off-canvas menu is, um, as we defined before, this. And for me, they're the same thing, but if you wanted to have two separate menus, you could, you could actually do that. Um, so we're going to back out of that and check out the widgets. These, again, you can customize them here, but that's something that I recommend you do within the WordPress admin dashboard. So we're just going to show you that they're there and move along. Homepage settings is a static page. This is um, how to travel the world on a budget page. You just These are your list of pages. You pick that. That's the page that you want for your homepage. And this is actually the homepage. Post page um, is a travel blog page. That is this page here. So if you wanted to switch it, you could. But for me, that's how it is. Oh boy. Okay, so additional CSS. I got a squeaky chair. Uh, this comes pre-configured with some CSS. That goes up until this point. So you have 145 lines of CSS that came with this um, this theme, this WordPress theme. I added, which appears to be close to 30 lines of CSS. Let's go through each one of these lines to make sure you guys understand why I added them. So the post image, margin bottom zero, um, uh, I'll put these in the description below so you don't have to type them out and so I don't have to read them verbally to you, but this block of code between 147 and 149 adds an extra um, space between the image and the text. So let's see what that does, if that actually changes anything. Which it does not change anything there. Let's see if it changes in here. not interesting so maybe we don't need this this is kind of embarrassing that uh, that you might not need this this was actually inherited from one of my older blogs still generate press but okay so let's ignore that it doesn't seem like we need that okay so between 151 and 153 WordPress show post image the margin bottom is eight pixels why did I add this here this is gonna be hard to track down there Okay, so that does something. Um, we wanted a, if we don't have this here, there's a little bit of a big space between the title of the blog post and the picture. By adding in eight pixels with this important on this end, which I'm not sure if that's necessary, but let's keep it there. Um, we, we tighten up that space between the two. So that one seems to be important. Scroll to the top button. This is that button that I showed you, um, this button. So I was able to customize the color, like to have the light blue and darker blue, and the position. So um, when we're on mobile, let's go to mobile, refresh this. This was overlapping with my social share icon, so I had to move that up some. We'll go back to the full screen. Uh, that's what this stuff does. So I made the margin from the bottom be 60 instead of whatever the default was, which is two, you, you would see how that would overlap. The color of the text is FFFFFFFFFFFF, six Fs, which is white. Um, the color of the, the, the button itself is blue. And the color, if you're hovering over it or if you're focusing on it, is a light blue. So that's what that between 155 and 167 does. Finally, um, between 169 and 174 is padding between blog post featured image grid. So this is 
this kind of ties back to the beginning and this was a point of frustration when um, customizing this website so the way I have it set up is um, okay so the way without the CSS let me just say this without the CSS that's what we have in this this uh, archived content page there was no literally no way I could figure out how to get separating space between these images without like offsetting something on mobile it was just a big mess so I figured the best way was custom CSS all this says is when the screen is more than or equal to 768 pixels we want there to be a 15 pixel space to the right of these pictures let's see if I can show you what the why the heck I did that so without that um, you can see that this looks fine on mobile but on desktop it looks like crap so I guess without explaining too much uh, that's that's why I have that there I don't know why this doesn't update sometimes I think maybe because you're switching back and forth there we go that looks good so okay enough enough custom CSS we literally just went through every single setting in this appearance page but we're not done yet there's a little bit more that I want to do um, let's go back into our WordPress dashman, dashman, WordPress admin dashboard and go through a couple other things so what do I have here uh, customize page speed elements let's do elements because I promise you guys we would do elements so under appearance and elements this is pretty much how I got these cool uh, parallaxing headers for a lot of my pages so let's go through my process for doing that so I have one specifically for my home page I have one for blog posts I have one for other pages I have one for categories I have one for this page itself which I'm not sure why I couldn't reuse the page header but that was necessary and one for search results so most importantly the home page header I have this two liner here the uh, the site title Tony travels and the kind of like a, what do they call it tagline learn how to travel the world on a budget so that is the content of this whoops of this page this header we um, want it to be full width contained and centered on desktop the top margin is 120 the bottom margin is 120 left and right are 20 we picked a custom image which is this panorama the background position is center top we do want it to parallax we don't want the uh, featured image to show up and the text color is going to be white I think everything else is okay make sure the background is transparent um, this is important here we want to merge with the content so if we don't merge with the content it's not going to give us what we want so the merge is basically so you can see here we have the header up here still we want that to push up into the nav bar so that's what that merge does it actually uh, merges the two and and you could merge on desktop only but i think it looks good on mobile and desktop for me so um we'll keep that there and refresh it that looks good what else do we got uh, we won't use this setting but we will in another element the background is clear we didn't change anything display rules so this is where we're gonna apply this um, this element to so we only want it on the front page if you wanted it on the front page and um, your uh, all other pages you could do that but we don't want that you can exclude it from certain pages if you have a, like a very comprehensive location you can exclude certain locations do it that way um, for me I just went through like this page I want this this page I want that so that's good uh, that that I hope makes sense that's how I did the the home page header let's go look through a couple more of these so the page headers they're a little bit different it just shows the post title with that little um, uh, black outline you can see maybe that's not the best example so maybe that's not either you can see there's like a black 
outline like behind so you have white text and then black text behind it and it's off centered down towards the bottom more the way we did that was we had a 200 pixel top padding 100 bottom so basically 200 up here 100 down here the left and right are 20 on desktop mobile we for all of these pretty much we just cut the values in half so 110 50 10 that's important I'm glad I mentioned that. Um, the background image is the featured image. So for this page, if we go to, this is the, the featured image. If we go here to edit it, you have a place to add a featured image. So that's what's down here for the about page. For the other pages, like um, the gear page, I have a featured image in here. That's this picture. For the contact page, I have a featured image in there. So that's how that all works. We're just getting that there. We want to disable the featured image because if we don't and we save this, you're going to get it twice. We don't want that. We just want it once. So make sure you disable the featured image. Text is the same. Background is the same. White and clear. The background position I always have center top. Um, again, we have the merge and we want this to be applied to all pages. So we'll just update that in case we made any changes. The tricky one here, and that's back to normal, right? Yep. So the tricky one here was an actual blog post itself. So we could have took taken this image and did the same thing, put it up top here, did the parallaxing and everything, but I didn't actually, I, I thought like forward and I figured that doing such a thing was um, going to be complicated in the future if I didn't have like a high resolution picture for my blog post and I, I, if I wanted to put text on top of the image, which I do a lot over on my other website, like this will make a lot more sense, I guess, if I show it to you. Um, if I do something like this or this, it would just get really messy with text on some and text not on others. So I decided against that. I just wanted a standard featured image within the content and I wanted the black nav bar at the top so how did I do that that is the blog post header element this one takes a little bit of uh, time to explain um, so I have container contained inner container contained I don't think a lot of this stuff matters I do <laughs> so this is important for the content of the blog post header I have just a space and that you have to have a space or else it won't show up. There's no parallaxing going on. The featured image, don't have to worry about that. All the magic happens in the site header tab here. We still want to merge with the content, but we're going to offset it 60 pixels and um, check this box that says navigation colors and pick black. Now that's probably doesn't make sense. One last thing is displaying on all posts. So. What the heck is this doing? Well, um, let's turn this off. And yeah, let's just turn this off and show you what it looks like without any of this. So if you disable that altogether, you're gonna just get a white bar across the top and your text is white, which we can change the color, but I wanted the black background. So, um, and we didn't want that parallaxing. So in order to make that happen, we come into the site header, we apply a black navigation background in an offset of 60 pixels. If we don't have that offset, this is going to kind of push up into it and it's not going to look natural. See, so like your text for your blog post title is pushed up behind that. So that is why we need the 60 pixels. Okay, and that looks good. I think that's all I want to say about elements. You guys know that it's highly customizable. Like you can have a, a specific image show up for search results and, and uh, 404 pages. Like if I go to this page, which doesn't exist, I got that, which is not going to be permanent, but that's what it looks like for search results. I think I'm reusing that too. So um, go in there, play around with the elements and you'll figure it out. Um, but this is a good like overview of how we got to where we are. What else? What else? Um, I think as far as the plugin is concerned, oh no, I told you guys widgets. We have two different widgets, the right sidebar and the left sidebar. 
think we're going to wrap up soon. Stick with me, guys. Um, so the right sidebar has our recent posts. Let's show you guys. Tony travels. So this is the right sidebar. Uh, we have recent post categories and the want to stay in touch. So these, and I think I talked about this in a previous one, this is really easy to set up. Like um, if you wanted to add something else to this, if you wanted to add something else, I'll try search to this. You could just simply drag and drop, search, save, go back over here, refresh. Look at here, we have a search box. So they're configurable in that way and orderable just by clicking and dragging. So <clears throat> recent posts, that's what that looks like. We have five posts showing up. Uh, the categories, um, I don't have a title for that, but it just uses categories by default. And um, the visual editor. So the visual editor is a way to just apply um, HTML code directly to this little widget area. So we just have a header for want to stay in touch, sign up to receive my latest travel updates and posts. So you can do anything you want here if you know a little bit of HTML. Oh shoot, I didn't actually want to delete that. <laughs> Whoops. I'll go ahead and uh, fix that after the fact. Um, left sidebar, same thing. Oh, perfect, we have this so I can show you fully. So. Um, right sidebar, let's add a visual editor element, which is right here. Oof. Drag that up, put it right here. We're going to put that into the text because it's HTML code. That's going to be, uh, let's just call it email list, email sign up. Okay. Save. So if I did that correctly, you should see no change when I refresh this page for the right sidebar, except for the fact uh, we don't. So I guess if you do name it something, that's going to override that. Um, so don't name it. This is good to know. Done. Boom. Boom. Okay, cool. So that looks good. Uh, that's widgets. Um, we got to talk about menus and this will be the last thing I think, I promise, I think. Uh, the main menu. We have, we have one men menu, pretty much. The main menu, which we share between the nav bar, the primary menu, and the off canvas. You guys know what that is by this point. We have that selected for both, uh, menu locations. And the order of our menu items are home, travel blog, my gear, about Tony, and contact. Within each one of these, you pick the way you want it to display on the label itself, which could be different from the the original page. Um, I think I have that. Yeah, my gear is named different from the actual page itself, which is Tony's travel gear. Let's see, so this is this page is called Tony's travel gear, but the tab is called my gear. Let's go back here. Um, yeah, this is a similar similar setup here. If you want to add something to this menu, you can do that just by clicking add menu. We can save it, go back here, refresh it, and now you have backpacking in Thailand as a menu item up here. We don't actually want that, so delete it. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I want to say. Is that everything? One thing, promise this is the last thing, and then we'll let you guys go. I did say that I got a page speed uh, insight score of 99 on mobile, 100 on desktop or on this website. So if you go to tonytravels.com. I just want to show you guys that this this is this is the way to go. This is the fastest WordPress theme that I found, and it kind of look at that. I got 100 on mobile now. Um, that's amazing. And there's there's some even more optimizations that I can do. But 100 on mobile, desktop 100. Everything looks good. Uh, one of the things that I attribute to having this fast page speed inside score is because I'm using a, uh, a host called uh, Linode. And I'll put a link down there, a referral link for that below as well. 
this this is some of the cheapest and some of the fastest um, hosting that I found out there. And it's, I don't, I forget what kind of account I have, but um, yeah, as little as $10 a month for two gigabytes of RAM, one CPU core, 55 or 50 gigabytes SSD, like that, that's what this website's running on. And it's giving me a page speed score of 100, which I've never achieved before to date. So um, basically, if you need like a recommendation for a hosting company for your website and a WordPress theme, I highly recommend Linode and I highly recommend the Generate Press WordPress theme. So if you combine those two things together, you'll have a fast, efficient website that looks cool, most importantly, and is uh, ready to go if you just watch this whole entire customization tutorial. So I'm sick of talking. I'm sure you guys are sick of listening to me too. If you have any further questions, let me know down below in the comments. If you got any value out of this uh, tutorial video today, give me a thumbs up and let me know as well. If you subscribe to my channel, um, I appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.